Hello everyone, I am Dr. Prashant and in this presentation we will talk about osteoporosis. Before we move on to the definition of osteoporosis, let us take a look at the basics of bone biology. Bone biology consists of bone modeling and bone remodeling. Bone modeling is a position of new bone tissue on outer surfaces of cortex. Whereas bone remodeling is realignment or repair of existing bone. Osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity are important concepts to understand and let me introduce you to the players of this concept. The first is the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta or rank. The next is osteoprotegerin and the third is the rank ligand. A ligand is a molecule to which another molecule binds. Now, when the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta or rank binds to the rank ligand, this condition promotes osteoclastogenesis and is responsible for producing a pro-resorptive state or a calcio-tropic state. What this means is that the osteoclasts will resorb or dissolve the bone to increase calcium content in the serum. Now, if the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa beta or rank binds to osteoprotegerin, this results in a osteoblastogenic state and this is responsible for production of bone or an anabolic state. As already mentioned, when osteoprotegerin binds to rank, this condition lays down osteoblast and produces bone. On the other hand, when rank binds to rank ligand, this condition is pro-resorptive, the osteoclasts get activated and resorb the bone. Bone health is maintained by the osteoblast-osteoclast balance. When there is increased osteoblastic activity, this results in formation of bone or remodeling and when there is increased osteoclastic activity, this results in resorption and the long-standing imbalance between osteoblast and osteoclast is responsible for osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is defined as reduction in bone strength that leads to increased risk of fractures and is defined as a T-score of less than 2.5. The risk factors for osteoporosis include elderly age, alcohol, drugs such as heparin and corticosteroids, estrogen deficiency, testosterone deficiency, smoking, family history, female gender and reduced sun intake, a malignancy, reduced calcium intake, reduced exercise or sedentary lifestyle, thyroid pathologies, bleeding manifestations. Let us now take a look at the methods to evaluate for osteoporosis. We can do a quantitative ultrasonography, a quantitative computed tomography, or we can do a dual energy x-ray absorptiometry or DEXA scan. And this is the gold standard and DEXA at the hip has best correlation with the future risk of fractures. DEXA of the vertebral spine also predicts vertebral fractures, but the risk is falsely high if there is underlying osteoarthritis. Bone mineral density is interpreted using the T-score, which is standard deviation of BMD or bone mineral density from the average sex match 30-year-old, whereas Z-score is less used and a standard deviation compared to the age-matched controls. What this means is that this can be remembered using a mnemonic Tom runs when he is young. That is, T-score is comparison of a patient's bone mineral density with a 30-year-old or young individual. And a T-score of less than minus 2.5, that is less than 2.5 standard deviations, when compared to a young individual, is the definition of osteoporosis. The indications for bone mineral density testing is women more than 64 years or men more than 70 years of age and this is regardless of risk of fractures. Younger postmenopausal women with risk of fractures, adults who have fracture after the age of 60 years and conditions like rheumatoid arthritis should prompt bone mineral density testing. A patient who is taking more than 5 milligrams 
per day or equivalent of prednisone for more than 3 months should undergo bone mineral density testing because corticosteroids can induce osteoporosis. Let us now take a look at the management options in osteoporosis. The management options include nutritional which include calcium, vitamin D and vitamin K and magnesium as well and pharmacological. Let's take a look at the pharmacological options now. Estrogen reduces bone turnover and prevents bone loss and reduces the risk of clinical spine and hip fractures by 34% and risk of all fractures by 24%. There are disadvantages to estrogen as well and this include a 100% increase in venous thromboembolism, a 26% increase in breast cancer and a 29% increase in fatal and non-fatal myocardial infarction. For every 10,000 women treated with estrogen progestin for one year, there are 44 fewer fractures, 5 fewer hip fractures and 6 fewer colorectal cancers. But there are 8 excess heart attacks, 8 excess breast cancers and 18 excess venous thromboembolisms. The next pharmacological option in osteoporosis is selective estrogen receptor modulators, the example for which are tamoxifen, raloxifene and bazadoxifene. Tamoxifen showed a reduction in clinical vertebral hip and coles fracture and also reduced the incidence of breast cancer by 45%. However, it increased the incidence of uterine cancer and stroke. Raloxifene, on the other hand, also reduced vertebral fractures by about 40% and reduces breast cancer by 65%, but there was no increased incidence of uterine cancer and stroke. Bazadoxifene with conjugated estrogen protects the uterine tissue and prevents the need for the use of a progestin. The next option to treat osteoporosis is bisphosphonates. These include alendronate, resedronate, ibandronate and zoledronic acid. These reduce vertebral and hip fractures and are to be taken with a full glass of water with breakfast. Due to poor absorption, they may cause osteonecrosis of jaw and atypical femur fractures as their adverse side effects. The next pharmacological option in osteoporosis is the rank ligand inhibitor denosumab which increases BMD in spine and hip and in the forearm and reduces vertebral, hip and non-vertebral fractures over a 3 year period. It is also approved for men with carcinoma prostate on gonadotropin releasing hormone analogues and women with breast cancer on aromatase inhibitors. Teriparatide is required to be administered by daily injections and exerts anabolic effects and showed reduced vertebral fractures by 65% and non-vertebral fractures by 45%. Treatment with teriparatide must be followed by an anti-resorptive agent such as a bisphosphonate. That's it for our video on osteoporosis. We will see you in the next presentation.